Right now we want to talk about Irma and time unfortunately running out for people who need to get out of South Florida. This storm, and it seems, Pamela, by the way it almost missed every... I mean, it could have hit Cuba. It didn't. It really could have hit Puerto Rico. It didn't. And by kind of missing all those islands, it really was allowed to just continue to gain strength. And it will continue to do so, which is absolutely not what we want to hear. It's now a Category 4, perhaps strengthening to a Category 5 just before it hits the Florida Keys. And some uh, very dire wording, according to uh, the Florida Keys National Weather Service offices down in South Florida. Uh, some of that on Twitter. But uh, this is just unprecedented with Earth. Irma. And just looking back, comparing this to previous storms, this could be as strong as Andrew back in 1992 as it made landfall with 160 mile per hour winds. We get close to it with the latest forecast on Irma. It will surpass Charlie, probably the Florida Keys hurricane of 1919, Labor Day hurricane there in 1935. No. But here's the latest max winds 155. It is right in between Cuba and the Bahamas, moving west at 12 and just feeding off of this extremely warm water water temp. In the mid-80s, in the upper 80s, as you near Florida, we go into that deep pink and that indicates approaching 90 degrees with the water temperature. So it's feeding off of it and here you see it goes up to a Category 5 as it approaches Key West. It's Sunday morning, 160 mile per hour winds estimated. And then as a Category 4, it moves farther inland Sunday afternoon all the way through Central Florida. The effects of this hurricane from coast to coast over the peninsula there. Monday starts to decrease to a tropical storm with some heavy rain moving towards the deep south, but all eyes definitely across South Florida here. The wave heights just incredible off the charts. Over 30 foot waves affecting the Keys and no one is safe on the Florida Keys with the storm Sunday morning as it moves across um, and starts to make landfall right around the southern and western part of the coast here, but still experiencing that wind, that wave height over 30 feet in Miami. So storm surge warnings and watches are posted from coast to coast here, five to 10 foot surge. The rainfall too, the other concern here, not nearly as much as Harvey because it is moving much faster through the state, but still five to 10 inches of rain, widespread with isolated 20 inches of rain. We have three hurricanes we're tracking here, obviously Irma, we have Katia along the coast of Mexico, and this one here, Jose, which is also a category four. It looks to move out to sea at this time. What we're experiencing here across southern New England is a very weak trough, allowing for that combined with daytime heating and some showers have erupted. A couple thunderstorms too along the south shore. Those storms are pushing offshore just between Situate and Marshfield there and some of those spot showers are across southern New Hampshire. So the bigger picture shows, well, yes, we have more showers moving our way, but overnight as we lose the instability in the daytime heating, 55, we're clear and cool tomorrow. Starting off with temperatures in the mid 60s and low 70s. And once again, in the heat of the afternoon, prior to sunset, a few spot showers, but otherwise mostly dry for your weekend outlook. Sunday, 70 degrees, and we have a warming trend Monday and Tuesday.